Hey everybody, welcome back to part four of 3D Drawing. In the previous lessons, we've been able to pull off some amazing tricks to be able to create amazing illusions with our three-dimensional solids that we're drawing. And today, we're gonna raise the bar again. Today, we're gonna have a look at what shading can do for our drawings. Shading is a way that we can include lights and darks on our solids to make them look even more three-dimensional. Now shading at its best doesn't just show a light and a dark, kind of like the examples of what you see right over here. We are gonna be looking how to include several levels of shading in our drawings. And then the other key focus for today is that we're gonna consider a single light source and how that could work to make all of our solids appear like they're in the same space. So with those couple of ideas in mind, let's head out to the studio and start our drawing. Hey. As you're gonna find out today, shading is an amazing way to take your drawings to the next level. Super cool effects that can be made once we've mastered the skills in the previous lessons and then we add some shading on top of it. Artists throughout time have tried to come up with different ways and strategies of showing the lights and darks in an authentic and realistic way. One of the key focuses in our technique today that I want you to keep in mind is think about how hard or soft you are pressing with your pencil because that changes how light or dark things appear in your drawing. So for today, we're going to need some of the same supplies that we've always been rocking. We're definitely going to need our pencil, nicely sharpened pencil, an eraser on hand is going to help us out quite a bit. We'll also need a ruler for a couple of things today. And then I would highly recommend, rather than having to redraw all your solids, let's use one of the drawings that we've done from our previous lessons, and then keep one extra sheet of blank paper on hand for some of the things that we're gonna do today. With those things set and a nice space to draw, let's get to work. One of the mistakes that I see a lot of younger artists make is that they assume that we have one dark value and one light value and shading is done. But in fact, the best shading shows a wide variety of lights and darks where we have the darkest of the dark, the lightest of the light, and then everything in between. So the first thing that we're gonna do is practice making a chart of all of our lights and darks. What we're gonna look for is that we can get at least five different kinds of values of light and dark. Now on any piece of paper, whether it's a blank piece of paper or if you just have some blank spots on a piece of paper, we're gonna create our chart. I'm gonna use, uh, right on this really nice example of a 3D solid, I have some blank space right down at the bottom here. That's where I'm gonna create my chart. Grab your ruler with me. And what we're gonna do actually is to create a chart by starting off by creating a rectangle. Now this rectangle, we are not gonna do like what we've done in the past lessons where we create a three-dimensional solid with it. We are just gonna simply create a rectangle with some divisions in it. Now, what I wanna do is try to get five equal divisions in it. Um, sometimes it's really helpful to do a little bit of measuring here. We normally use a ruler just for straight edges, but I am gonna have a look and see how long my, my rectangle is. It's a little over eight inches. And so if I divide that by five, I would have just a little bit over like an inch and a half or so. So I'm gonna make a, a couple of marks on here. We'll see how this works out. Trying to get it evenly spread throughout. And I'll have one, two, three, four, five spaces. So I'm gonna take and draw some vertical lines down and create this box, create this box. One more line after that. And now I have five different sections here where I wanna show my lights and my darks. So what I'm gonna do with that is all the way on this side, this box right here, I'm not gonna to touch. That box is gonna be my lightest light, okay? So absolutely no pencil happens in that box. Now I'm gonna to refer to the other end of the rectangle in this box right here. What we're gonna do is using your pencil, you're gonna press as hard as you can to create a really dark value. And this is gonna take a little bit to fill in, so I'm gonna speed up the footage here so that you can see mine get done very, very quickly. It's super important with this that you are pressing extremely hard with your pencil. When we are trying to get different levels of light and dark with a normal pencil, the only way that we can get that result is by pressing harder or softer with our pencil. This is also gonna burn through your pencil tip pretty quickly and really dull your edge. So when we get into drawing on our solids, you might wanna have a sharpener handy or some spare pencils on hand. All right, so now on my grid here, I have my lightest value, and again, I'm gonna leave this one alone, and now I have my darkest value set. 
So now we have to fill in the in-betweens. When I come up to this next box here, I want it to be dark, but not as dark as this one that I just completed. So what I'm gonna do with my pencil is, I'm gonna be shading in the same way, but I'm gonna try to keep it just a little bit lighter than what I did before. When shading, it's always important that you try to fill in the entire thing when you are just doing this basic level of shading. If you wanna check out some of these examples that I can show you here on different strategies that artists use for shading, you could employ some of these when you're drawing, and then you'll notice that not the entire space is filled. We have artists do things such as cross-hatching or stippling or kind of a scribbling to it. There are many, many ways to create differences between lights and darks without just basic shading. Okay, I think I've got my next level is set pretty well. I have a super dark. Now I have a very dark, but not super dark. So this one, I've got to go a little bit lighter still. And every time that I do this, as I go lighter and lighter and lighter, I'm just pressing a little bit lighter with the pencil as I go. So let's go a little bit lighter. All right, that one's looking pretty good. I've got one box left to go, and now I'm gonna be pressing very lightly. Not so light that there's nothing there, but I'm gonna be pressing very lightly on this next one. And now what we've gotta do is take this knowledge, this idea of pressing hard or soft with our pencil, and apply it to a three-dimensional solid like this. We've got our super darks getting into a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter, and then of course the face or the front of my uh, solids here are completely blank. Those are the lightest spaces. So we have some really good dynamics going on here, but it's these values applied onto our solid. So let's try to wrap our brains around this idea of one consistent light source. When we have one consistent light source, the light is gonna fall on one side, the side towards the light, and the shadow is gonna fall on the opposite side away from the light. So in my drawing here, I'm going to just draw an image of a sun so that I know where my light source is gonna be coming from. You can draw a sun on your drawing however you want it to be. It can have a smiley face, it can look realistic, it can look cartoony. That's totally up to you. I have myself a very basic sun, but it's gonna get the job done. So let's see what's gonna happen if we apply this light source, our sun right here, and how it would apply to this cylinder. Last time we drew that cylinder to make it look like it was literally flying out into space at us. Um, it's a really cool detail, but with the addition of a little bit of shading on this one, it's gonna take it to the next level. Now, one extra thing that I'm gonna add to this is, I'm gonna show you a technique on how to follow our curves of our cylinder to make our shading really emphasize the three-dimensional qualities of what we're doing. So my light source here, as it comes and shines down onto my cylinder, the whole top side of this cylinder is gonna stay relatively blank. I'm also gonna keep my uh, light and dark scale right over here as a reminder as I draw. It's gonna be helpful for me to see this as I work. Now this light scale that's right here, I'm gonna be looking at that to be on the top. And as we tip around the sides of the cylinder, it's gonna get a little bit darker and darker and darker still. Now, notice when I shade that I'm gonna be doing little curves to the motions and how I shade because that's gonna show us the roundness of the cylinder. So let's start with the darkest of the dark here, okay, and see how that applies on our cylinder here. Right down in the bottom, right on this edge here, I'm gonna put the darkest of the dark and I'm gonna put a little curve to my line as we go. Watch this, a little tiny curve to the line as we go. And again, I'm pressing really, really hard with my pencil. And that looks pretty good right there. I've got these nice little curve happening. Now I'm gonna go to the other side and do the same thing. I wanna get a really nice little curve happening to the shading as it goes. Okay, so I have my two sides done with my darkest value. And then I'm gonna move in on both sides and move to this next lighter value. So I'm gonna be making the same kind of curved lines, but I'm gonna press a little bit lighter with my pencil. And we go through and through and through, just a little bit lighter with the pencil. We still want it to appear dark, but not as dark as where we started. I'm going, doing the same thing on this side. And now we're gonna keep moving in. Now I'm gonna go to my next level here, maintaining this kind of curve that I'm working with, and I wanna go a little bit lighter still. That could be done with less lines, but we definitely wanna do that with less pressure from the pencil. 
Now on the other side here, the same idea. Again, I'm trying to get little curves to happen as we do it so that the shading actually acts like a parallel line on this cylinder. And now finally, I'm gonna go with my lightest value here. Okay, we're gonna keep the totally blank spot right up here on the top, but I need to get this light value in as well. So let's go really, really lightly with the pencil. Back again on this side, really, really lightly with the pencil. And a lot of times when I have that done, I go through and just do a little bit of shading on top of it all to kind of blend it all in a little bit. So I'm gonna go just to fill in some of my blank spots and make sure that these are blending in really well to show really subtle transitions in between my lights and my darks. If you get a result like this, you're gonna have a really dynamic and solid looking cylinder by doing some of the details we did in the past and adding a little bit of shading this time. Now, we do want to include a little bit of shading on the face of the solid. If we consider that our light source is up here, it is not shining directly on the face of our solid, and we probably would not see different levels of shading. So I would pick one of my medium levels of shading and put the entire face done that way. Now, on the outside of the cylinder, we were trying to make it look curved to make it uh, follow the curves of the cylinder itself. On the face, it's just flat. So what I'm gonna do is just going across and basically horizontally shading everything to make him go straight across. It's better if you can follow a similar pattern through all of your shading rather than scribble scrabble every which direction. So here I'm gonna take it and I'm going to maybe pick this medium level and I'm gonna try to apply that medium level all the way across on the face of the solid. And because I'm using sort of a horizontal shading technique here with no curves to it, no zigzags, no anything to it, it's really gonna show off the flatness of the face of this solid. We wanna make sure to get out all the way to the edges, don't leave any blank spots in, and if you go over the boundaries of it, as I did a little bit in mine, we can always go back and erase a little bit on the outside of the circle. But there we go, we've got it. I'm gonna erase just a little bit that I got outside of the lines. And this cylinder is looking really great now. So we've taken the ideas that we had of different levels of shading. Now we've combined it with two other concepts. We have a single light source, and we also have shading in, in specific methods to show off the three-dimensional qualities of these solids. Let's look at what might happen if we do it on one of the solids that we have with an opening in the inside. Our box right here has an opening on the inside, and this is gonna get into an interesting territory. Now, if we're gonna think about a singular light source, we have this light source that is shining down on our box. And so this side of the box is gonna be one of these two levels. It's gonna be either completely blank, or it's gonna be just lightly shaded but then underneath the box is gonna fall into one of our darker categories here, and then inside of the box is where we're gonna see the transitions going between. So this surface here, I think I'm gonna keep blank. I'm gonna keep it with my nice, plain and simple, and now underneath, I'm gonna go with one of these two levels. I'm gonna shade in the underneath because it is has no light at all. We are gonna shade that in relatively darkly. And here's where we get into the advanced things, right? On the inside of what we've done there, the further back into that opening that you go, the darker it would become. We will have some light that comes onto the outside here. So as it goes through, back here in this solid, I am gonna put my super darks. As I approach out this way, I'm gonna have my mediums, and then these last couple of rows out here, I'm gonna be using these levels in here. So we're gonna do like we did on the cylinder with several different levels and how they sort of blend out, but we're gonna apply that on the inside of our solid. So let's start with our super dark. As far into that opening as you can see, we're gonna make it go super dark. Now, as I begin to move further out from the inside of that opening, now I'm gonna get into my medium level. So I'm not shading now as dark as I was all the way on the inside, but I am still keeping it relatively dark. Now I'm gonna move up into my medium, so I'm going lighter with the pencil still.
Now, as I'm moving out and out and out, now I'm gonna get into this level and then finally I'm gonna leave it blank as soon as we get out all the way out. So that very last row, I'm gonna leave absolutely blank. Now I always go back through and I just kind of touch up my shading just to go over it a little bit, make sure that I don't have any blank spots left in and I can kind of improve the blending of the light and the dark as I go through and do this. Now, last but not least, the face of the solid is facing away from the light source, just like we had on the cylinder. The face of the solid is flat. So again, I'm gonna go with sort of horizontal lines as I shade this in. And I'm gonna go with, again, kind of the medium level of shading here. So we're gonna just touch in, just not too dark, not too light. We're gonna get in with just horizontal lines of shading. And I'm going to get this covered in. I'm gonna to need to do a little bit of erasing where I got out of bounds. And I'm gonna go through it one more time to try to make sure that I get all of my blank spots covered so that the shading looks even and consistent all the way throughout. Little bit of erasing if I went out of bounds to make this look nice and clean. But now that solid looks fully three-dimensional. I've included an opening, I've used parallels lines and connection lines, and now with a little bit of shading, it looks fully dynamic, fully three-dimensional. If we take those same ideas on what I did right here and apply it to a simpler solid, like the solid that is here, I have multiples, which was an interesting technique to use, but actually all of the sides of that solid are completely flat, there are no details on them. So I can think about exactly what I did on these sides and apply it to this solid as well. On the front of the solid, I'm going to apply a kind of a medium level of shading. It is not directly facing away from the light source, but it is also not in direct sunlight either. The side of this solid will be in direct sunlight, so I will leave it blank, but the front of it here would, would receive some light. So I've got it covered pretty well. Now I wanna get in and make sure that I get all of my blank spots covered, get nice even covering. And again, I went with just a horizontal blend, okay? Moving my pencil across and across and across. I'll carefully erase where I got out of bounds a little bit. This side of the solid, I'm gonna leave completely blank. The light source is coming in just like this. So that side would show up in light. And then underneath it, I've got to get one of our dark levels, like what we did over here. So I'm going to go in and shade that one in, again, using just horizontal lines, but I'm using a little bit harder pencil pressure to get that done. And the same exact technique would be used on the solid behind it. We can apply the same levels of shading so go ahead and add that one in too. So we took from our last drawing and we've added onto three of our solids to add a little bit of shading to increase the dynamic nature of your solids. I'm gonna show you one more and this one I am going to completely ignore my light and dark scale. It is possible, depending on certain details that you apply, that you could just use lights and darks very simply with just one light and one dark. On this particular example and what we had, I created a grid type effect on it. It's definitely possible to use shading in a different way to represent different colors or to represent a pattern. So with a grid-like uh, appearance on your solid like this, I could very simply just pick out, uh, maybe keep some of them blank and then keep some of them at like a medium or a dark level and we can apply it just like this. So if I have a gridded out appearance, this particular box, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna shade. I'm gonna keep uh, going across horizontally because this is a flat surface. And then the next box would be blank. Then the next box after that, I'm gonna to try to shade to the same level that I just did. Same horizontal lines. We wanna make sure that we get it all covered. And so I have a pattern created here with an on off in terms of shading. Now I come down to this one. This is where I'd have the shading on this one. And then this is where I'd have the shading on this one. 
Anytime that you do shading though, it is super important that you really pay attention to your craftsmanship, get rid of any blank spots in there, and if you ever go out of bounds, grab your eraser and try to clean up your work and all of your edges. As I tip over here onto the sides and the bottom of the solid, I'm no longer going to be using horizontal lines. What I am going to do is try to make my lines go towards the vanishing point as I shade. Well, there it is, folks. That's the basics on three-dimensional shading applied to solids. Remember that all the things that I show you, you might come up with a really good strategy or a completely different idea to make your drawings look even better than what I've shown you today. I wish you the best of luck as you continue on these couple of solids. And remember, keep practicing. There's no way to be great at this unless you take the time to make your own improvements by practicing and practicing and practicing. Good luck to you. Thanks for joining me today and I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you.